Digital circuits are what we call active devices, and that means that they, they require power supplies in order to operate. So when you take a digital circuit, uh, let's represent it as just a block, and let's take a look at a, a transmitter. What we have here is we're going to introduce this notion of a power supply voltage. Okay? And you typically draw the power supply voltages at the top. And a voltage is always the potential energy between two points. So you can't just have a voltage floating in free space. It always has to be relative to some other voltage. So the voltage that we are typically relative to is what we call ground. And I'm going to abbreviate that as GND. Now, <clears throat> we are only going to focus on digital circuits that use a single power supply and a single ground. And that will simplify operation. But that's that's predominantly when you look at a single gate that's that's the way that digital circuits are designed these days and ground is a theoretical uh, infinite source of electrons that if you that will not develop a voltage so we can always assume that ground is at zero volts and so this also represents the point at which the power supply voltage is with respect to. Now we're going to call the power supply voltage VCC and you'll also see it sometimes called VDD and the CC and the DD are subscripts. CC actually stands for collector to collector and it refers to uh, the way that transistors are sometimes connected to each other on the integrated circuit to implement these digital circuits or these basic gates. DD stands for drain to drain. Uh, we'll see that DD is probably more representative of how modern digital circuits are designed. Uh, CC is kind of a legacy thing, but irregardless, we typically just say VCC and not a lot of people really think about what these subscripts mean. So we're going to have this VCC and zero volts, and this represents, ground represents the lowest voltage in the system, and VCC will represent the highest voltage in the system. And what's going to happen is that with you, the first thing you have to do when you fire up a digital circuit is you have to provide a power supply and a ground. So you have to provide VCC and ground in order for the thing to operate. Okay. Now, that's the, the power supply serves a couple purposes. Number one, it is the highest, highest voltage in the system and the ground is the lowest. But it also provides a certain amount of current that is necessary in order for the circuit to operate. So current, we're going to, is current is represented with the uh, letter I. <coughs> so this is current, is represented as I, and it has a unit of amps. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the way current flows into and out of a digital circuit and try to kind of think about some of the considerations that we need to make. All right, so when you look at the power supply voltages, they're VCC and ground, then you turn and you look at your power supply currents. So we're going to call we're going to call the current that flows into the device from VCC. We're going to call that I VCC. Okay, and this is also you can also think about it as ICC, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then the current that's flowing into ground is going to be I, and we'll give it the uh, subscript G and D. So the direction of the current, current is directional. <coughs> it flows from VCC into the device, and then it flows out of the device and into ground. So you have I VCC and I ground. Now, you'll see in here that ICC, sometimes in data sheets or sometimes when people talk about it, they'll also call it ICC. Uh, there's different different just terminologies and different uh, syntax the way that people talk about what the power supply current is and we'll kind of discuss all those in a second. Okay, so now when you look at what it takes or what components that the power supply current is made of, it's actually made of, of two main components. So the first one is going to be the current that is used to just make the digital circuit operational and that's going to be called the QScent current and that's going to be IQ, and that is the QScent current. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say QUI, QU, oh, excuse me, <laughs> QUIESCENT, QScent current. And that just represents the amount of current that flows into the device to basically keep the transistors within here operational. Okay, so it's kind of a steady flowing, nothing, nothing switching on the device. It's just the current to keep the, the device working. 
Then you're also going to have this other component, which is going to be the load, or a better term for that would be the output current. So we'll call it the output current. And we can represent, or we can give that the nickname IL. Now you say, what is the output current? Well, the output current is this. We're going to have outputs on this device that are connected to another load. And so you'll have a, a, a receiver over here. So this will be the receiver. Well, whatever a digital circuit is driving is referred to as the load. And this load out here, we've only talked about it as a, a, another digital circuit, which is interpreting ones and zeros. But it actually doesn't have to be. It can be other things out here, such as uh, an LED or something like that, or a switch, or like a relay. But when we look at a transmitter and we try to look at the amount of current that is being pulled out of the power supply and then the amount of current that's going into ground, it is heavily dictated by what type of load is being driven. When it's driving another gate, it's very small. When it's driving a resistor or an LED, it can be somewhat large. When it's driving a relay, it can be really large. So the current that goes out to the load is going to influence how much current comes through the VCC pin and, and also through the ground pin. Okay, so Let's let's just put two let's just put two outputs on this example just so we have a couple things. Now we're going to define the directionality of the output current I/O as follows. We're going to give it terms. When the transmitter outputs current or provides current to a load, we call that sourcing current. And when current is pulled from the load into the device, we're going to call that sinking current, or pulled into the transmitter. Now, when you source current, the only place the current can come from in the digital circuit is going to be from the power supply. So you can think of it as the power supply ICC provides this output current that is sourced to the load, and then when current is pulled from the load, it is sunk or synced into the transmitter, it is going to flow into the transmitting pin and then into the ground. Okay, so the QSN current you can think of as this. It is just operational current that flows from the power supply into the ground and it's just always flowing to keep the transistors biased and operational. And then depending on what the load is doing, you're either going to be sourcing or sinking current in order to do whatever you're doing, but that current comes from either the VCC pin or the ground pin. Okay, so that's kind of just an overview of how the current is flowing. <coughs> Now, there's a rule with current, and that's called Kirchhoff's Current Law. And basically what it says is the current into any system is equal to the current out of any system. So if you draw a circle around a transmitter, and you look at all the sources of current that come into it, they have to be equal to all the sources of current going out. So in this simple example, I have my, my power supply current, IVCC, is a source of current coming into the device. And then I have I ground, which is an exit point for the current to come in. And we know that IQ, or the quiescent current, is always going to come out of IVCC and it's going to flow into I ground. But then we have this kind of dynamic situation over here <laughs> that you are either driving or sourcing current to a load or you're sinking current from a load. And this dictates the maximum amount of IVCC or I ground that you're going to have. And how many outputs you're going to have is going to dictate how much power supply current you have and how many are sourcing versus sinking is also going to dictate that. One of the missing components here is the input current. So if you had a digital circuit, it's obviously going to have some inputs. And you're going to have input current that comes into this. Well, it turns out that <coughs> the relative magnitudes of the currents on a digital circuit are as follows. The output current is by far the largest amount of current in the digital system. So it is just you're charging, discharging, you're providing DC current, you're doing all this stuff to the load because you're trying to drive highs and lows out. And this is the largest of the, the sources of current. Then the QS and current is very, very small. So it's typically measured in nanoamps or microamps and it's very small uh, relative to the output current. Then you have the input current, which we'll call II. It is also very, very small. So in modern digital circuits, it's very small. And it's so small that sometimes you just ignore it. <laughs> in fact, it's sometimes you'll call it the leakage current, but it, it's a very small amount of current. So when you try to calculate what's going on, you typically just you typically, to the first order, look at the, the output current, and then you'll move to the quiescent current, and then you'll look at the input current, if there's any of it. 
Okay? And so sometimes when we do this analysis, sometimes we'll ignore what's going on or, or ignore the input current. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, an example of trying to figure out how much power supply current you would have. So let's just take a look at, let's take a look at a circuit that has, let's, let's say it has two outputs and you are given that it has a VCC pin and it has a ground pin and you are trying to find I ground and you're trying to find I VCC and you're given the following. You're given that IO on this first pin, which we'll call pin 1, is going to be, and I'll put it as a parenthesis there, IO1, is actually going to be 4 milliamps sourced. So that means that the direction is I'm sourcing 4 milliamps to some load that's over here. So you have some load. And then let's take a look at, let's say that IO for this other pin, which we'll call 2, was also equal to 4 milliamps sourced. So this is the situation that we're looking at right now where you have two outputs, they're both sourcing 4 milliamps of current to some load that's sitting over here. We want to calculate what IVCC is and what iGround is. You're also given that IQ is equal to 1 milliamp, and that's the QS in current, and that I input is equal to zero or ignore it. So we're just going to ignore if there's any input current in here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to find the directionality of where the output current is coming from. So if I'm sourcing a load, the only place that that can come from is from the BCC. That's, a, that's the only place that current enters into the digital system. So I can kind of graphically draw it as this. So I have 4 milliamps coming in from the power supply pin and providing IO1 with the current necessary to source the load. And then I also have another 4 milliamps that's coming into, that's going out of IO2. So if you look at it, IC, IVCC has to provide 8 milliamps of current just to drive these two loads. So the 8 milliamps exits on IO1 and IO2, but it had to come from someplace, and the place it comes from is a power supply pit. Okay? Also coming out of the power supply pin is the QS current, which we can just show as flowing from VCC to ground, and that will be IQ, which is equal to 1 milliamp. So now if you say, okay, I want to know what... I want to know what IVCC was, then what we do is we sum all the currents that are exiting that pin or that are actually coming into the device. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have IQ, which is 1 milliamp, and then I'm going to add that to IO1. I'm going to add that to IO2. So the answer to that will be equal to 1 milliamp plus 4 milliamps plus 4 milliamps. So I could say that IVCC is going to be equal to 9 milliamps. If I want to know what I ground was, I look at that and I sum all the sources of current or all the current that's flowing in that pin. And in this situation, it's simply just IQ, which is going to be 1 milliamp. Okay? So the total amount of current in IVCC was 9 milliamps. The total amount of current exiting on ground was 1 million. <clears throat> so we can kind of do a quick analysis to figure out which way the current's flowing. Let's do another quick example just to continue to illustrate this point. And that is going to be, let's, let's do one where it's got even more outputs, but I'm, I'm both sourcing and sinking loads. So let's take a situation where I have a digital circuit, and I have a power supply pin, ECC, and I have a ground pin, which is ground. And I'm interested in what IVCC is, and I'm also interested in what I ground is. But I have a situation where I have three outputs, <coughs> and I'm going to have IO1 is going to be sourcing one milliamp. And I'll, I'll tell, that, tell you that it's sourcing by driving an arrow. And then I'm going to have another output which is going to be called IO2, and it is going to be sinking 2 milliamps. And then let's say I have also, I have a third input, which is going to be IO3, and it's also going to be sinking 2 milliamps. And then I say, 
In addition to that, I'm going to give you that IQ is equal to 0 0.5 milliamps. And I'm also going to say that I in is ignore. And what I'm interested in knowing is, what is I VCC and what is I ground? So I want to solve for those two. Well, the easiest way to do it is to kind of sum up or just to graphically draw where the current's flowing, knowing that anything coming, all the current coming into a digital circuit is equal to all the current going out of the digital circuit. Okay, so let's begin. Let's just draw IQ right away. So IQ comes in. It flows from VCC to ground. So IQ goes that way, and that's 0 0.5 milliamps. So that's 0 0.5 milliamps. And then let's take a look at when you're sourcing 1 milliamp. Well, the only place that the current can come from is VCC. So if 1 milliamp is exiting right here, it has to come from the VCC because the VCC pin is the only thing that can provide current, or that's how current flows into the device. And then I'm syncing 2 milliamps on IO2 and also on IO3, and the only place that it can go is into the ground pin. So I'm going to have 2 milliamps going this way, and I'm going to have 2 milliamps going that way. So from this, and I'll put 1 milliamp there, so from this I can graphically see where all the current's flowing, <coughs> and I'll say, okay, what's the sum? What is I, B, C, C? Well, if you think about it, we're going to have I, Q came into the device, and then I had 1 milliamp, or I, O, 1, which also came into the device. So that was equal to 0 0.5 milliamps plus 1 milliamps. So the answer was that I had 1.5 milliamps coming into the circuit through the VCC pin, and that was made up of the crescent current and also sourcing current on IO1. And then if I look at I ground, I'm interested in what flew into that. Well, that again is IQ because it had to exit the circuit somewhere. So I'm going to have IQ plus IO2, which is I'm sinking 2 milliamps there. And I have IO3 and because and I'm sinking 2 milliamps there. So if I add all this up, I've got 0 0.5 milliamps plus 2 milliamps plus 2 milliamps, and the answer there is 4.5 milliamps. So I had 4.5 milliamps exiting the device on the ground pen. Okay, so that was a couple quick examples, but it illustrates a, uh, another set of specifications that we always need to keep in mind. And these are going to be called the maximum current specifications, because current, when current flows through something, when it flows through any impedance, it causes heat. And heat becomes an issue because if the heat is too excessive, it can actually melt the device. So any material can be melted in a digital circuit. That can be the metal on the pins. It can be the plastic insulation on the part itself. It can even be the transistors within the integrated circuit. So you want to make sure that you never violate the maximum current specifications. It turns out that there's maximum current specifications for all of the inputs and outputs on here. So you're going to have things like this, like I, VCC, max, and that's going to be a specification for how much current f can flow through the power supply pin. You're also going to have things like I, ground, max, and you can always tell that it's a maximum specification because it's the, it always has max on there. It'll never have a minimum specification because the minimum would be zero and you don't care about that. Uh, you're also going to have specifications for I.O., which is going to be I.O. max. And it'll step typically given as plus or minus some amount of current. And the reason is, is that these I.O. pins can source current and also sink current. So current flows back and forth between them. And then, let's see, what else are we going to have? You can, yeah, so those are the, the main three current specifications. So what you have here is when you look at a device, you're going to be given these specs. Now, what do you have control over? What you have control over, you don't have control over the QS and current. You're given, you're dictated, it's dictated to you what the power supply voltage needs to be in order to make this circuit work. But what you do have control over is what is the load that's out here? Okay, so the load, you can think of current as this. The load takes whatever amount of current it wants. If you put a load out here, which looks just like an open circuit, it'll take no current and everything's great. But you could also put something out here that was a, a very power hungry resistor that would then consume a lot of current and the current just comes from somewhere. So you can connect something out here on the load 
that will consume current and it will easily violate the specifications at some point. And then what happens is once you start violating the current specifications on the, the part itself, it'll actually melt the device. So that's when the device is destroyed. So when you, when you design these digital transmitter receiver pairs, you have multiple things to keep in, keep in mind. So you're going to have a transmitter and you're going to have a receiver. The first thing that has to happen is you're trying to transmit ones and zeros, but you have to make sure that you output ranges of voltages from the transmitter that can be received by the receiver. So when you're outputting a high, you need to make sure that the receiver can receive that. And what you're really looking at there is making sure that the power supplies are, connect are the same on the transmitter and receiver, or that at least they're close, and then you got to make sure that you have some noise margin in there so that you can accommodate any loss and then when you connect these together you got to make sure that you didn't lose too much when driving a high so that the signal didn't actually fall outside of the range of voltages that are interpreted as high so you have to make sure that your voltages for the high and the low line up and then you have to also make sure that the current that is drawn when you're driving these highs or low is not so excessive that you violate the IO max specification and you also have to make sure that you don't violate the IO or the IVCC or the I ground specification so that you don't damage the part. Now one final thing uh, to mention on this is that the amount of current that flows in any given time through a power supply can quickly exceed its specification because these digital circuits are going to have multiple output drivers. So let's say for example you had eight outputs and you only had one input pin. Well, if each one of these drove 10 milliamps out at the same time, you could easily have a situation where you had 80 milliamps going through the power supply pin and just due to the multiplicity of the number of outputs, you can have an excessive amount of power supply current uh, immediately. So that's one thing that you need to consider.